morning. Where are you now? I am in Cologne. And it's a beautiful sunny day. And it's early in the morning. We had a few beers in the beer garden yesterday. Kölsch. Kölsch. And this is a... Cologne is a beer overdosis, just that you know. No. And, uh, but it's, it's light beer, so it's fine. And today, we are going to meet Fritjof's sister. You want to see Fritjof's sister look at these videos from Mauritius? Before you look at this video. <laughs> and we will uh, discover more of Cologne. And my sister actually invited us to her breakfast today, to her place. It's very kind. And after that, the stroll through the city with a local guide, which is always the best, will begin. This is the slowest ticket machine in the world. Perfect for your speed, I would say, huh? Yeah, especially this morning. <laughs> now we had a breakfast at my sister's place, and my sister will now give us a private tour through Köln, and we are heading to the first site. There's my sister, Marty, and her partner. The first stop is the Peace Park and inside the Peace Park there's an old kind of like a fort construction which you can see here behind me and on top there's a eagle um, which is interesting to have a look at. Today this place is used for many other things. It was originally built to protect, protect the city um, during the First World War uh, from attacks. And now, as I said, it's called Peace Park and many other happenings are taking place here. For example, there's a flea market down here once in a while and there's a children's playground over there. And now we will head to the next site. Here in Cologne, you can see these book boxes. There's about 10 of them. So if you have extra books you don't want to read, you can bring them here. And if you're looking for new reading, you come here and take a book. Just open it, it's free. You can take one, for example, this. Minced meat for every day. For every day, minced meat, fried in field, whatever. So you can take a new cookbook with you. It's a smart idea. Oh, and down there, there's a section for kinder, for kids. For children. For children, like Shogun. It's a perfect <laughs> book for kids. <laughs> or Shark women, high fish flower. <laughs> Smart idea. And this bookshelf is located in the Eierplätzchen, which means egg park or egg square. And here you can also have a nice coffee and breakfast in a little cafe called Römer Park. On this map you can see the city of Cologne with the river Rhine and this is the old town that used to be the old town and it has these towers of the old city walls that have been kept. Some of them are restored. And we are now where? We are here in the south. Here, in the south. And this is one of the, the, the city walls, the remains of the city wall and the tower. And the name is Severin's Tor, the south, in the yes. south. And in Germany, there are a lot of uh, Turkish uh, dealers or traders, yeah. and they're mainly selling fruits and have, of course, also a little supermarket there. And here you can see the all kinds of fruits, and the quality at these shops is really good normally. But you can see how many people are shopping here, so it must be good. And this is a used velo market in the city of Cologne. And when you want to come here and sell your velo, you have to pay 10 euros. You can put your velo here on the square and then people are coming and stroll through the offerings and maybe you find your new velo here, your new bicycle. In a little side street, there is the Misery Church. You can see above the door, this church was built for people in misery who didn't have a lot of money and, and who were buried actually here 
and had their last worshipping here and in the courtyard there's even a very old cemetery with these old crosses and graves. We are at the San John Baptist Church and the special here are the seats. They look more like a preparation for a rock concert. This is a very unusual setup for a church. During the construction of a new metro line in Cologne, the tower of this church actually got badly damaged. It fell forward quite a lot and they had to stabilize it, but now uh, they put new concrete underneath and stabilize it and now it's all straight again. Here in the center of Cologne there's a big hole in the ground and this is a quite a dramatic place because here used to be the biggest uh, Sydney archive of north from the Alps. A historic house and it one day it collapsed taking a few buildings around it with it and fell into this hole because they were building this underground line that also moved the church tower just behind us and uh, this was eight years ago and this is what's left they are building now already something but the hole is still there because they haven't uh, gone through yet all the processes to find out who's responsible for this disaster and they're of course, still in court yeah and uh, they're still in court luckily only two people died on this on this disaster because the builders they managed to evacuate everyone when they started to notice that the thing is collapsing and of course uh, numerous historic uh, manuscripts and, and books and, and scripts and everything went uh, forgotten and lost in this disaster so this is uh, a sad story in the German building history. We are now in the St. Georg Church and actually the people here they can pray to the holy Judas Thaddeus, this one here, and ask him or pray for him to get through their diploma or to get through their car driving license exam etc. And when they make it all the way through then they make this Stones here, this place, and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for my diploma, for example, here. And now, after church, we really need a coffee, and that's just across the street. And it's so great when you have a local guide like my sister, <laughs> and she's explaining us so many details about the city. If I would say everything, probably it would take like one hour. So. So I'm only concentrating on the small details. And look at this cake, this is a carrot cake. <laughs> so we had our coffee in this hip, funky coffee place called Weidmeister. One of the best coffees we've had for a long time. We are now in the church Maria im Capitol, which means Maria Church inside or on top of the Capitol. And this used to be actually a Roman temple where they built the church on top. And the church got badly destroyed in the Second World War and then rebuilt. And it's very impressive because it's quite a big church. I think it's a little bit, it's a Gothic style, I'm not quite sure. No, Roman style. A Roman style, of course. And you can go behind the altar, and there's the church continues there, and there are more seats. It's beautiful, beautiful place to visit. This church behind me, Maria am Capitol, is really a beautiful church. If you're here in that area, you should visit. There's also this beautiful garden with all these different flowers and herbs and rosemary and lavender, etc. And we were complaining very often when we were in South America or Mexico that many of the sites or museums or churches had only signs and sites written in Spanish. And to be fair, I saw already now in many churches here in Cologne or in Germany that many signs are only in German. And I think that's not okay. It should be at least also be written in English. In the dome I saw you can buy guides in different languages but then you have to pay for one leaflet, one euro. There was only one sign here in this church which was written in four languages and this sign was saying if you visit the church please leave one euro. So 
when money is involved, suddenly it works. Why don't you make everything at least in English? The Gülich Square, which is a very, very old square in Cologne. And there was a house, Mr. Gülich was a trader and he was trading things. Merchant, <laughs> actually. A merchant, actually. And he did a rebellion against the mayor. And he was against something. And then the city government decided that he has, been, has to be killed. So they cut his head off, destroyed his house, teared the house down and said on this square there's never ever going to be a house again. And you can see this fountain and on top of the fountain there's a saying that they put his head on top and his head was exposed there for many times. And right behind here is a, the oldest perfumery of Co Cologne, Farina from 1709. And this was the place where the original or real Eau de Cologne, Eau de Cologne, Eau de Cologne yes. <laughs> Kölnisch Wasser was produced and they are still doing today and you can also come here and do guided tours through the olfactorial world. Yeah, and 4711 copied Actually, the, origi yeah. the so original. So 4711 yeah. is not the original. This one was the first one. <laughs> so come here and smell it. And of course we couldn't resist and we had to go inside and inside. This is the original Eau de Cologne water of Cologne, uh, of water from Cologne. And it smells actually much better than the original 40, 4711 or 4711. Which is not the original. Which is not the original. This is the original from 1709. And this is the original bottle. This is how it looked like when they started with it. This long bottle from 1709, original Eau de Cologne. We are now in the old part of the Cologne city near the Altermarkt and between two houses there's a small opening where you can go inside a little courtyard and in this courtyard there is a carnival fountain because Cologne is of course the heart of the, of the German carnival and there this fountain is actually quite new and Willy, Willy Ostermann which was a, or who was a carnival activist has a, a, a board there on the back where they kind of honor him for all his activities he did for the carnival and you can see all these groups down here this is where actually the free walking tour which is also available in, Co in Cologne ends at this fountain and there were just two tours the front one was German and the back one in English we are now in the church of Groß St. Martin which is also in the old part of the town in Cologne and this church was actually completely destroyed in the second world war which you can see over here on these pictures you can see here the the roof was completely gone and then it was rebuilt and only reopened 1985 and inside it's very plain and simple and you can still see some traces of destruction which have not been really uh, renovated completely but it's a really nice atmosphere inside of this church and then of course you have these many many breweries in Cologne where you can have a real Kölsch beer and some are really traditional, some are more modern. This is one of the more traditional one. And this is how the beer is delivered in this tray. So when you get the beer, they mark on this deck the amount of beers you have. And if you don't stay stopped, they just keep filling it. And then you're drunk, and then you can't stay stopped anymore. anymore. So when you cheers with the beer in Cologne, you have to use the bottom part of the glass. Never do like this, only like this, because the glasses are so small. Cheers! <laughs> and this is a typical food you will get in a, in a brewery house or beer house. And this is called Halve Hahn. And this is actually just a, a bread roll with a slice of cheese. And there's also a meat version, this one, which is called Tata Happen. This little house here behind me isn't a telephone booth. This used to be where the owner of the restaurant was actually located and he was cashing in from the waiters the money uh, he got from the guests. So 
the restaurant owner was probably sitting on one side and the waiter was coming to the other side or standing in front and they did their mess. This is the museum Ludwig and right next to the old part of the town you will find a original piece of a Roman street and they it's amazing how they did it. You can see all the stones are totally flat and you can walk over this piece of street here. We are now in the church of St. Ursula and this is actually very close to the main station and in this church which was also if I'm informed right a monastery for for women there are, there's a golden chamber they call it and behind me you can see this is a, a bust and inside or you, up here you, the, the head can be opened and inside are the bones of a human being you can see all the bones here and until to the 17th century all these busts were stored inside the church until they decided to open many of them and put all the bones on top of this room and these bones or this was done actually to show that in front of God everybody is the same because everybody of course has the same bone it doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor or what orientation you have what skin color every human is the same I think this is a quite nice thing and every bust here in this room contains actually a human body also over here you can see all the bones inside this corpus and in these glass boxes or glass containers in each one of these boxes is actually a skull of a human and also behind the altar you have all these different skulls each one of course a human being or used to be a human so this is a little bit also a spooky place also over there in that corner those are all skulls and now we are inside of the church of the Ursulina church which has a beautiful altar and actually the bones in the bone chamber they don't really know where all the bones are from if they are from the woman or if they're Romans or if where they found them could be also some kind of graveyard outside of the church and those amphors up there that's where the boot busts were exposed before This was our second day in Cologne. As you can see, it was a little bit of a church-heavy video this time. Cologne actually has 12 Romanesque churches and we only showed you a little part of it, full of all kinds of sites. This town is really worth exploring. And now we will head back to Fritjof's hometown and tomorrow we will start a new adventure in the north of Germany. Um, Thank you for watching this episode of The Way We Saw It in Cologne. Uh, hit the like button down there. Safe travels always. Bye.